Are you having trouble picking the right hero for your draft? Do you keep wondering why the hero you drafted seemed good at first but was lackluster in the actual game? Don't worry, because we at Action are here to help you. This is our draft tier list. Before we get started, we would like to thank Swaggy G and Void Gimmick for helping our very own Aviera make the tier list. It's hard to get a decent sample size from a single person since one can only draft so many different heroes. First, let's break down the rankings. S is for heroes which are auto picks as soon as you see them, and generally are good on their own. Being able to pick two of them is amazing, and in some cases, having two of the same might push your deck over the top. A tier is for heroes that are really good, but require some color synergies. Unlike S tier heroes, they require you to have decent main deck cards to unlock their full potential. B tier is for heroes that are good in general, but some parts of their kit may be lackluster. They could either have low stats, a weak passive, or a bad signature card. C tier is for heroes that you might be forced to pick if you need a hero of a certain color. This might be due to you drafting cards of a color that you don't already have a hero for. Lastly, we have F tier. This tier is for heroes that are pretty much unplayable and you should ignore them no matter what. If heroes from this pool are your last pick of the pack, then you are definitely better off picking the basic heroes. First on the blue hero list, we have Crystal Maiden. With such a weak body, even for a blue hero, her passive does nothing to compensate for it. The passive of restoring mana might seem valuable on paper, but Crystal Maiden just can't live that long to make use of it repeatedly without significant effort. Her signature card is pretty decent, as disarming a hero is a powerful effect, but for such a weak hero, the signature card needs to be game-changing for it to see play. Therefore, Crystal Maiden belongs in the F tier. Next up, Earthshaker. The stats are only slightly better than Crystal Maiden's, but the ability to stun its enemy neighbors every four rounds is very powerful. His signature spell can wipe out all opposing units, and the larger the board is, the worse it'll be for your opponent. Opponents will have to be very careful against Earthshaker. This is why he belongs in the A tier. Jumoi, the Wise, has decent stats for a blue hero, but a very underwhelming ability. It draws you a card every four rounds. Not very impactful. His signature card is very situational. It could possibly be useful at a specific time, but it is not strong enough to put Jumoi higher than the C tier. Next, we have Kana. Kana has the highest health pool of any of the blue heroes. This will keep her alive for a while to make the most out of her passive, which forces the random melee creeps to spawn in her lane. If she stays on the board for multiple rounds, which she probably will, the board can quickly become overwhelmed with creeps. She can basically solo win you the lane. On the defensive, or if you're behind, her signature card, Prey on the Weak, can bring you back by summoning a large number of hounds to either attack the enemy tower or protect yours. Strong stats, passive, and signature tells us that Kana belongs in the S tier. Luna has pretty good numbers for a blue hero and the 8 health will let her survive for a few turns. Her passive that deals 1 piercing damage to an enemy may not seem broken, but combined with her signature card Eclipse, it can deal huge amounts of piercing damage to the opposing side of the board. If you have more than one Luna in your deck, repeatedly casting Eclipse can lock your opponent out of playing anything, pushing your advantage even further. A strong hero all around, Luna deserves her place in the S tier. Meepo, one of the strangest heroes in the game, has fairly weak stats, but is intended to be comboed with certain cards to be useful. While summoning multiple Meepos might seem like it could overwhelm your opponent, them killing one kills the rest in all lanes, so the signature will be very tricky to get good use out of. His active is okay, but the effort to make it work is just not worth it. A high risk, high meme value hero, Meepo, belongs in the F tier. Ogre Magi. Decent stats, and a powerful passive. Card advantage matters greatly in draft, as you don't ever want to run out of cards to keep applying pressure. Ogre Magi gives you a 25% chance of getting a blue spell back that you cast on his lane. If you're great at gambling, this is the hero for you. Imagine being able to cast Dimensional Portal over and over again. It would be as if you had a con on the board. Ogre Magi's signature card is very potent as well. A 3-mana improvement that slowly maintains the opposing board size in a lane is very good for maintaining pressure. Having multiple in a lane will usually deter your opponent from developing there, winning the lane for a relatively low cost. A strong hero on all accounts, Ogre Magi belongs in the A tier. Outworld Devourer has decent stats. While 4 attack can kill melee creeps with one hit, that's all that Outworld has going for him. The passive, that gives you a 50% chance of restoring 2 mana, doesn't cut it, as 6 health means it's not staying alive long enough to get significant use out of it. The signature card also falls flat. 4 mana to stun and give damage immunity to a unit is not worth putting on anything. A lackluster hero in both Dota and Artifact, Outworld Devourer belongs in the F tier. For a blue hero, Prelix has pretty weak stats. 
but her ability to summon a melee creep into her lane could possibly have her count as a 5-9 unit. Even so, she is more of a support hero than anything, and you will need to put her in a lane with something stronger to keep her alive. Her signature is a 5-mana improvement that summons a melee creep into that lane every round. Very strong, and can also get snowbally if you start stacking multiple barracks on their own or with Prelix. A strong ability and signature, but with the weak stat line, Prelix cannot be put any higher than the B tier. Next up, we have Skywrath Mage. A decent body and a handy passive that gives a hero and its allied neighbors minus 2 armor. While good, this is only useful if you have something to follow up with afterwards. Something like his signature card, Mystic Flare, which deals 12 damage evenly split between a unit and its neighbors. This card, while powerful, is sometimes very awkward to use. Combining it with Skywrath's passive is a great combo, but without it, 4 divided between 3 enemies isn't always enough. 6 damage between 2, or 12 damage on 1, is much better and will kill more things. But this will require either setup or luck to happen. With so many ups and downs, Skywrath Mage belongs in the C tier. Venomancer With weak stats and a passive that is similar to Prelix, he will summon a Plague Ward into his lane every hero deploy phase. Plague Wards are 1-3s but with a strong effect to deal 2 piercing damage to a random enemy neighbor before the action phase. Keeping with the theme of swarming, his signature card will summon 2 Plague Wards for you. While Venomancer is not a strong hero in draft, he can stall or defend a lane on his own. Considering the fact that Venomancer is pretty similar to Prolix in a lot of ways, it should not be a surprise that Venomancer belongs in the B tier. Lastly on the blue hero list we have Zeus. Zeus has good stats for a blue hero combined with a strong passive that deals one piercing damage to his enemy neighbors after playing a blue spell. His infamous signature card is very strong too, dealing 4 piercing damage to all enemy heroes in all lanes. Multi-lane hero killing is useful in the early game, but in the late game, when heroes gain more health and armor with the help of items, Thunder God's Wrath becomes a lot weaker. Therefore, contrary to popular opinion, we put Zeus in the B tier. That's all for our blue hero draft tier list. Be sure to check out our other tier list videos for the rest of the colors. I hope you guys have a better experience drafting now that you have watched this video. If you ever need to reference back to the tier list for all the colors, we have compiled a full tier list on our website for your convenience. Link is in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.